Hi everyone, welcome back to another lecture this week in the biotechnology series. Now we are having an exciting lecture on CRISPR technology. Of all the biotechnology topics so we have discussed so far, this is the only one in that I don't have any hands-on experience. But my former students and I co-authored a review article on CRISPR application recently. Now this technology is highly discussed and apparently a relatively easy way to edit genes because there are CRISPR kits that people can buy online and do experiment at home. Well, anyhow, this would not be a 21st century biotechnology series if we did not discuss CRISPR. So let's get started. In this lecture, we're going to briefly describe the origins of CRISPR technology and how it works, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of CRISPR. How can liposomes help overcome the limited delivery of CRISPR in human cells? And lastly, let's look at how CRISPR are being used in areas beyond genetic engineering. In the first biotechnology lecture, we talked about gene cloning can be accomplished by using restriction enzymes and ligated into a plasmid vector and through heat or an electric shock to induce the competent cell to uptake the plasmid DNA. Now this DNA recombination technology works great at a single cell level, but it's not so efficient for a complex organism. So this is somewhat an old school technology. And these days we have something much more efficient to put genes into cells. And these are the CRISPR-Cas9 genetic scissors. Now, this is called a pair of scissor because the CRISPR-Cas complex does both cutting the old genome and swapping in a new gene. CRISPR technology is a relatively young technology. It was first reported back in 1987 when they first discovered this CRISPR complex. Now, so this field is younger than Dr. Hong. Yeah. But it wasn't until the beginning of this century that scientists realized CRISPR families are present throughout prokaryotes. And as time goes on, researchers slowly discover the function of CRISPR in prokaryotes and the potential of using CRISPR in areas beyond a single cell organism. The significance of CRISPR is that it has become a new genome editing tool that can edit genomes of animals, plants, and microorganisms with extremely high precision. Now, the two scientists who developed the method, Dr. Carpentier and Dr. Daltner, were awarded the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. So what is CRISPR? CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. Now, no one say that. Everyone just say CRISPR, uh, which is are the short repetitive DNA sequences found in the genomes of about 40% of bacteria and 90% of archaea. Now, the CRISPR gene editing system is derived from a natural defense mechanism found in some bacteria. Now, when bacteria are attacked by bacterial phages, they use the CRISPR system to capture and store short pieces of the foreign invader's DNA sequence. Now, these short pieces are then used to recognize and destroy future invading bacterial phages by guiding Cas protein to cut out the DNA of the invader. So essentially, the CRISPR system is the bacteria's acquired immune system, right? I mentioned the Cas proteins cut the DNA of the invader. Now, there are a number of Cas protein variants, and the most commonly referred Cas protein is the Cas9. It is a nuclease, an enzyme that acts like a pair of molecular scissors cutting DNA at specific locations to create precisely targeted changes to the genetic codes. Now, along with that, the guiding molecule for Cas9 is a small RNA molecule called a single guide 
sgRNA or sgRNA. Now, the sgRNA is designed to match a specific sequence of DNA that needs to be cut out. When the sgRNA binds to Cas9, the two molecules form a complex that, that can recognize and bind to the target DNA sequence, allowing Cas9 to make a precise cut at that location. And by designing different sgRNAs, uh, so researchers can target different locations in the genome for editing, making the CRISPR system a powerful tool for modifying the genetic code of living organisms with high precision and accuracy. CRISPR-Cas9 is in the type 2 CRISPR system. It is the first and most well-known and widely used system for genome editing. The Cas9 protein cuts the DNA at the target site, allowing the insertion, deletion, or repeat placement of specific genes. The type 2 CRISPR system is particularly useful for genome editing because it requires only a single RNA molecule to guide the Cas9 protein to the target DNA sequence, making the system relatively simple to use and customized. The CRISPR-Cas system is a natural defense mechanism found in bacteria and archaea that helps to protect these microorganisms from invading bacteriophages and other foreign DNA. Now, the mechanisms of CRISPR-Cas system can be broken down into several steps. The first step is acquisition. When a bacterium encounters a foreign piece of DNA, such as from a bacteriophage, it can incorporate a small segment of that DNA into its own genome, and this segment is known as a spacer, and is stored in the bacterium's CRISPR locus, which is a region of bacterial genome that contains short repeated DNA sequences. So that is the acquisition stage. Then is the expression stage. Now the CRISPR locus is transcribed into a long RNA molecule, which is then processed into short individual RNA molecules that contain the acquired spacer sequence. And these small RNA molecules are called CRISPR RNAs. And then followed by interference. Now when that happens, that is when the bacterium encounters the same foreign DNA again in the future. The CR RNA or the CRISPR RNA combines with a protein called Cas to form a complex that can recognize and bind to the foreign DNA. Now the Cas protein then cuts the DNA and destroys the foreign invader and preventing further infection. In the bacterial immune system, these foreign DNA are incorporated into its genome forming a spacer sequence and then transcribed into CRISPR RNA. Now, in contrast, the CRISPR-Cas system used in genome editing is achieved by designing a specific guide RNA, sgRNA, that matches the target DNA sequence of interest, which then guides the Cas protein to that location in that genome. Now, the Cas protein can then cut the DNA at that site, allowing for the insertion, deletion, or replacement of specific genes. Beyond editing, CRISPR-Cas can actually use to repair a broken DNA and with a new template. And here is an example. Now, when a DNA double strand breaks occur, the cell's natural repair mechanism called non-homologous end joining will try to fix the break. Now, these repairs can sometimes introduce errors or mutations in the DNA sequence. The CRISPR-Cas system can be used to repair DNA breaks through a process called homology directed repair, or HDR. Now, to use CRISPR-Cas for DNA repair, the Cas9 protein is targeted to the site of the DNA break using a specific guide RNA. And the Cas9 protein then makes a precise cut at the site of breakage, creating two separate DNA strands. A repair template is then introduced into the cell, 
and the repair template contains the desired changes to the DNA sequence and also introduce short DNA sequences that are homologous to the sequence surrounding that cut site. Now, while HDR is less efficient than the non-homologous end joining repair pathway, it is more precise and can be used to introduce specific changes at precise locations in the genome. CRISPR-Cas9 can be found in common infectious bacteria and be harvested to perform DNA repair with mechanisms we just talked about. Now, although the precision of the cut is high, it is not 100% proof and can have off-target effects. Newer variants of Cas9s have higher fidelity, meaning having a higher precision. The CRISPR-Cas system has a wide range of potential applications in many different fields including medicine, agriculture, and biotechnology. And here are a few examples of how CRISPR-Cas system has been applied. For genetic editing, CRISPR-Cas can be used to make precise changes to the DNA sequence of living organisms including plants, animals, and even humans. Now, This has enormous potential for treating genetic diseases, developing new drugs, and creating crops with desired traits. Now, for disease diagnosis, CRISPR-Cas can be used as a highly sensitive diagnostic tool for detecting specific DNA sequences associated with diseases. This has the potential to revolutionize disease diagnosis. And for agriculture, the system can be used to develop crops that are resistant to pests and diseases requiring fewer pesticides and herbicides and have increased yields. And for synthetic biology, the system used to create synthetic biological systems such as introducing new metabolic pathways or regulatory circuits. And for animal models, CRISPR-Cas9 system or CRISPR-Cas can be used to create animal models of human diseases, allowing researchers to study the disease process and develop new treatments. So what are the reasons for using CRISPR? Why CRISPR? The first is precision. Right? CRISPR-Cas is a highly precise method of genome editing. It can be used to make precise changes and allowing researchers to insert a specific sequence of interest. And its versatility, it can be used to edit genomes of a wide range of organisms we just talked about plants, animals, and even humans. Now, although that could be controversial and we need to be aware of that. For efficiency, CRISPR-Cas is highly efficient compared to other older methods that we just talked about in our first lecture there. And it is very fairly easy to get accessed and the speed and cost they use to generate genetically modified organisms are much more quicker and cheaper than traditional breeding methods, which can take many generations. And this is an article summarizing that it only took the team one month to generate transgenic mice for experiments compared to using six months with conventional cloning and recombinant DNA technology and breeding a few generations. While CRISPR-Cas has many potential advantages, there are also several problems and limitations associated with the technology. And first is off-target effect. Now, while it is highly precise, there is still a risk of off-target effect, where the system accidentally cuts the DNA at unintended locations. This can lead to unintended consequences, such as introducing new mutations or even activations of harmful genes. The second is delivery. Delivering the system to the cells that need to be edited can be challenging, especially for certain types of cells or tissues. This can limit the effectiveness of the technology for some application. And third is the immune response. Now, it is originated from bacteria, so introducing this foreign material into cells can trigger the immune response, which can reduce the effectiveness of the whole process. And 
last but not least is the ethical concerns. Now there are many ethical concerns associated with the use of CRISPR-Cas9 for gene editing, especially when we are talking about putting this technology in human. Now there are also concerns about potential technology to be used for non-medical purposes. Well, so that could lead to something called designer babies. And we need to be aware that when we are learning about CRISPR. Let's look at one technology that can be used to deliver CRISPR-Cas into cells. And it is through the use of liposome delivery method. The liposomes are small spherical structures that are made of lipids that can encapsulate the CRISPR-Cas components, protecting them from degradations and facilitating their uptake by cells. And these components are typically loaded into the liposome and then mixed with the target cell. The liposomes fuse with the cell membrane, releasing the CRISPR-Cas components into the cell where they can edit the genome. One advantage of liposome delivery is that it can be used for both in vitro and in vivo applications. Another advantage of liposome delivery is that it is a relatively safe and non-invasive method of delivery. Unlike some other methods such as viral vector, liposome delivery does not typically trigger an immune response and cause significant toxicity. However, liposome delivery also has some limitations. It can be difficult to achieve high level of uptake in some cell types, and there is still a risk of off-target effects where the CRISPR-Cas components add unintended regions of the genome. The future of CRISPR-Cas is very promising, and the technology is expected to have a major impact on a wide range of fields, from medicines and agriculture to biotechnology and basic research such as gene therapies in humans, cancer treatments, agriculture applications, and synthetic biology, and many, many more. However, it is very important to ensure that the technology is used safely, ethically, and responsibly and that the potential risk and limitations are carefully considered and addressed before applying this technology. Now let's look at how CRISPR technology is used in diagnosis. The diagnosis and biosensing method developments is really my research focus, so that's why we are spending a little more time on this particular application. CRISPR-Cas can be used to detect specific RNA or DNA sequences of a virus in a sample, such as a blood or a saliva sample. Now, instead of using Cas9 protein, the system uses either Cas12 and Cas13 protein, and they have interesting names. The one that uses Cas13 is called Sherlock, which stands for specific high sensitivity enzymatic reporter unlocking and the one uses cas12 is called detector which stands for dna endonuclease targeted crispr trans reporters without getting too technical both systems use a fluorescent signal to detect specific sequences of either dna or rna in the test samples the detector system detects DNA because Cas12 cuts DNA only, and the Sherlock system detects RNA because Cas13 cuts RNA only. However, the virus's genome material or genomic material can be either DNA or RNA because transcriptions or reverse transcriptions can be done to the collected genetic material before it is treated with the Cas system. Now, in both systems, if the CRISPR-Cas component find the target sequence in the sample, they will cut the reporter and release a signal such as a fluorescent molecule from a fluorescent quencher, represented as Q in the figure. Now, if the target sequence is not present, there will be no signal indicating that the virus is not present in that sample. 
The advantage of CRISPR viral detection is that the system is very sensitive and specific. It can detect a very low amount of viral genomic material quickly and at a low cost. Now, in the context of today's world, there is much development using CRISPR-Cas system to detect the new virus. And if you want to learn more and read up on the articles, here are the few that were published in 2021. And while we are talking about the context of today's world, our next lecture will be on RNA technology and vaccine development from a technological standpoint. Now, so stay tuned and I will see you next time. Bye.